<risos> ok, Dona Joana, a gente vai começar, viu? Ok, so this, this presentation will be uh, bilingual. <laughs> I'll speak in English and I'll try to translate um, what my teammates uh, will say in Portuguese. They will uh, present a bit in, in English, um, hopefully, uh, and I can translate for them if, if necessary. So we are the Xingu River, uh, which is located in, in the Amazon in Brazil. Um, I'd like to present you um, Geisiane. She is the, the um, uh, local investigator. Um, Geisi, if you, if you, oh, I should present myself. I'm so sorry. I did, I forgot about myself. Um, okay, my name is Satya. I'm, I'm the PI for this uh, uh, project. Um, I'm the co-coordinator of, of, River City Network, I think I, I shouldn't be saying that. You guys know about that already. Um, so yeah, so I've been doing this, uh, I've been doing this research since 2016 when I started my PhD. And um, and I've been going to, to the Amazon for, for a while. And I've met these uh, interesting people there and, and we formed this team to try to um, think of solutions or new projects for that area after the PhD. Um, so yeah, so uh, Jayce, if you'd like to um, present yourself. Okay, good morning. I'm Jayce Anu. I'm living in Altamira, a city of Amazon. Um, I'm happy for this moment, so... I thank you, Paul and Satya and everybody. Uh, I have a degree in biology and a master's degree in science, uh, environment science and PhD in biodiversity and conservation. Um, for seven, about seven years, I have worked as research in with uh, river seed in areas and here Amazonia. Oh, so okay. Um, and thank you for this moment. Thank you so much, Jaziani. Um, Leticia, would you like to present yourself? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. I don't know if it's morning there, so. <laughs> Uh, I'm Leticia, uh, I'm a lawyer and a specialist in uh, public law and uh, I'm law environmental teacher. Uh, I'm so happy for this moment and it's a... Uh, I'm... I don't know if it's... Um, Sorry, it's my internet, it's not okay. So uh, I'm so happy for this moment and meet everyone uh, for, from RCN team. And I'm part of the Shingu's team now. Thank you so much, Leticia. Uh, Dona Joana, você quer se apresentar rapidinho? Falar um pouco da senhora? Falar seu nome? Mm -hmm, pode ser. Tá. É, meu... É, Joana Gomes da Silva, sou ribeirinha, moro aqui na, no lago de da barragem de Belo Monte, né? De, deixa, eu, deixa eu só traduzir rapidinho. Vai devagarzinho, por favor. Uh, this, is, uh, this is uh Miss Joana Gomes. She is a riverine woman and she lives in, in the banks, in the reservoir banks of the Xingu. Pode continuar, dona Joana. Conselheira aqui do Paial, né? Na luta contra o Belo Monte. She is uh, uh, a council member um, fighting for their rights uh, um, against uh, the dam, the hydropower dam. Isso, Dona Joana, desculpa. Posso? Já? É. Já? <laughs> ok. Um... Okay, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. 
Um, I will share the presentation now. Um, I feel. Can you all see this? Yes. yes. Okay. We can. Okay. Great. Um, so let's start um, the presentation. So um, unveiling the hidden narratives, uh, the lives and adaptation strategies of riverine women from Hezek's EDD to Altamira. So um, we we will start the presentation. Sorry, we will start the presentation ex explaining what are what we've seen in Altamira, the Shingu River, which is our river, the river that we are doing research, and then we'll speak a little bit of the of EDD and explain the connection between them. Um, so this is the content, uh, river, uh, the research location, who are the riverine, the relationship, their relationship to the environment, uh, the history of the riverine women, um, the story, sorry, the stories of the riverine women, the history of the Lamonchi, uh, and Belo Monte Dam, um, methodology, the environmental and social impact, and the trip to, to EDD. So this is the research location. As you can see, we are uh, in the, uh, on the left side, you can see the map of Brazil is in the north, uh, in the north part, our research uh, in the Amazon. It's one of the biggest states, Pará. Um, this is the Xingu River. Um, as you can see on the image in the kind, kind of center, you can see the, the city of Altamira, which is an urban area. Um, and those, those other places are just neighborhoods of the riverine people throughout the river. <clears throat> Who are the riverine people? So I, I thought it would be interesting and very important to explain who are they because they are not ind indigenous. They are um, people that came from the Northeast during the 18, 18, uh, hundreds, uh because of the rubber industry. And there were two periods of the rubber industry, one of the 1800s and the other one in the Second World War. And um, they came to work for, for this, uh, this industry. So they were called uh, the rubber soldiers. And um, once this boom, this, uh, this phase faded out, they were left in the forest. So many of them partnered with indigenous. That's how the indigenous knowledge, uh, that's how they carry the indigenous knowledge uh, currently. So this image on the side, on the right side, you can see it's uh, one of the riverine men. Um, this is actually Dona Joana's husband. He was showing us how to extract the rubber from the seringueira, which is the tree um, that you take the rubber from. Um, they are this group of people. They are known as as, as the invisible group because they are spread out uh, throughout the the river, the the forest, and they are located. They are living throughout the the riverbanks. Um, and the this, this specific group of of um that that we are researching the 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 riverines they have two houses they have one house in the riverbanks and the other one in the um urban area but for this information um leticia will explain a little bit um further so their relationship with uh nature so as 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 they understand this is their home. Um, it's not only the built environment, but everything around it, uh, the river, um, the background, the farm, and the forest. Oh, oh, what happened? Oh, I'm so sorry. Something happened. Just one second. Oh, no. One second. Um minuto, um minuto. Ih, gente. O que está acontecendo? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> uh, so this is their home. They live in collective support. So every family support each other and they, they have a subsistence economies, which means that um, they have, if they have more than enough, they will 
um, sell in the market. Um, that's how they, they, so they take um, the goods that are more than enough to the local market in Altamira. Um, the river connects uh, the families and the, the, the houses in the riverbanks to the, to the city. They are known as uh, people of waters because of their intimate relationship with the river. And also, I thought it would be interesting to put here that the, the land holds history, which is something that's very indigenous. Um, the cemeteries and everything is, is um, it's in the grounds where they were in the riverbanks. So it has, it has a lot of meaning and a lot of myths and it's very, um, it carries a lot of uh, uh, significance for them. So this is the part where Dona Joana will, will tell us a little bit of how it used to be um, before the dam. So their relationship with nature. Dona Joana. Oi. A senhora pode falar um pouquinho da, da sua relação com, com o meio ambiente, como é que era antes do Belo Monte, por favor? Sim, posso sim. Antes do Belo Monte, nosso modo de vida era muito diferente de, do modo que nós estamos vivendo agora, né? Porque a gente tinha um outro modo de vida. Tem que ir devagarzinho, né? Por favor, aí eu posso traduzir agora já. So, so before Belo Monte, their, their livelihood used to be very, very different. Um, pode, pode seguir. Porque antes do, da, da, dessa, do Belo Monte chegar aqui, nós tínhamos outro modo de vida, né? Porque nós vivíamos uma vida boa, né? Nós tínhamos uma vida confortável, né? Nós, nós... Era uma vida muito diferente da vida que nós vivemos hoje. So before Belo Monte, they used to have a, a, a life that was um, more comfortable. They had um, more plenty uh, things, uh, more, more things um, in the sense of food. Um, the food insecurity now is, a, is, a, is an issue. So um, there were more resources for them. Pode continuar, Dona João. É porque antes, nosso modo de vida era muito bom. Era porque nós tínhamos muita fartura, nós tínhamos, nós tínhamos nossos modos de viver na beira do rio, nós tínhamos nossos peixes, e hoje em dia nós não temos mais. Né? Nós estamos aqui passando muito por um sacrifício muito grande aqui nessa beira do, do Xingu, né? porque nós não temos mais nossos modos de vida que nós vivíamos antigamente, que nós tínhamos nossos peixes, nós tínhamos nossa castanha, nós tínhamos nossa seringueira, e hoje em dia nós não tem mais nada disso, acabou tudo. Nós estamos vivendo uma vida sem saúde, né? Não temos mais saúde aqui nessa beira do rio, não temos condição de, de fazer uma consulta. A gente vive aqui abandonado yeah. nessa beira de rio. So, so before they used to have a lot of uh, uh, fish and um, Brazilian nut and all these. Uh, uh, goods for them to to survive and now because of the change of uh, of the dam these these things are not offered anymore they are it's harder to find there there are less fish and uh, and and things are not uh, around them anymore é, quer adicionar mais alguma coisa eu posso posso seguir dona Joana só uma coisa só assim por causa que Agora nós vive assim que uma hora o rio está seco, outra hora o rio está cheio. E isso aí prejudica muita gente. So she's saying that now with the dam, there's no a natural cycle. The cycle has changed, which, uh, which uh, also changes the way they understand and the way they treat the, the, the river and the environment and how the environment responds to it. Um, so that's, that's one of the hardships now. Um, that she's finding uh, with the dam. Mais alguma coisa, Dona Joana? Posso seguir? Pode. So I'm, I'll, I'll move on. Okay, so this is Belo Monte. Belo Monte is a, is a dam that has been um, uh, under discussion for 30, 30 years. And finally, in 2007, uh, it became the main project for the, the 
the then government, um, they, they introduced this dam with a sustainable development plan, which was the first uh, type of plan ever uh, introduced in Brazil, um, which was meant to improve the infrastructure of the affected cities and people's livelihood. So that's the aim of the sustainable development plan. Um, because of the dam, uh, many people were displaced. So 300 families, um, riverine families, were displaced for, from their homes in the river, in the river banks of, of the Xingu. Um, and 2% were resettled, 2% of these uh, 300 were resettled in, the, in Altamira. So the next slide uh, will be Leticia, um, who will um, explain the riverine uh, people's uh, rights. Okay, um, so I will, I will speak about uh, a little bit about the uh, riverine condition. Um, as the double housing. Um, in the case of uh, riverine communities affected by Belo Monte, um, the territoriality is identified uh, with river and city mobility like such as um, told before, uh, they had two houses, one in the canals of the city and another one in the river banks. And like the, uh, the two images can explain better. The second image is about this uh, example of houses in, in the, the city and the first image is an example of a house in Riverbanks. Um, in this this double housing, the condition for maintaining the the riverine livelihood with uh, access to basic service such as health and education, um, around seventy three percent of the families affected had two houses, um, the property in the river, the house in the river, were, were they farming, fishing, and do extractivist activities. And the, the, the house in the city used to be uh, in central neighborhoods with easy access to hospitals and supermarkets and schools. Um, in the most part of this this um, community, these families affected um, had the the two houses affected by a uh, bell uh, the uh, house of the city and the house of the the, the river banks. So uh, the it, it, the the problem is the company responsible for the construction of the hydroelectric uh, didn't recognize this condition of double housing. So they just in the process of compensation, they just um, mm, uh, did the compensation of one of the houses. So uh, we had this, this problem here. And um, the removal of the the families from the houses on the river and happened uh, without uh, proposing an, an alternative for the continuation to farming, mm -hmm. fishing, and extractivism activities uh, that uh, guarantee uh, and ensure the livelihood of these families. And and the urban displacement has had a mobility difficult of for these families. Uh, they have been forced to move to neighborhoods far from the city center, uh, where they previously had access to schools, to shops, uh, banks, and health services. And uh, no, this most of the these journeys to the city center I made on foot, 
um, by bicycle or motorcycle uh, <laughs> because the, the public transport in the municipality is is um, inexistent. Um, and uh, in addition, this uh, removal from the, the the houses in the city uh, generate an expense uh, that was not um, available in the family budget. Um, we can see uh, there has been drastic increase in traffic accidents and deaths caused by the compulsory displacement of these people. Uh, in the process of the forced displacement, uh, the the construction of Belmont uh, failed to respect national and international rules um, governing relations between the development projects and traditional populations. And in fact, this this uh, project project was not an well, exception. Uh, in the general rule is this kind of project is, has been omission and violation of rights. And normally uh, it's what happens in, in this kind of projects. Um, there's a, a convention from an uh, international labor organization the, it's Convention 169 uh, that it, which deals about indigenous and tribal people in which Brazil is sign, signatory. Um, in this convention, it stipulates that the people uh, affected for this kind of project, uh, it, they can't be moved from the lands they occupy. Uh, it when exceptional it happen you know, if, if it's necessary um, uh, it may only be carried out with the consent free given uh, freely given in full knowledge of the facts but um, according a, a report coordinated by the federal public prosecutor's office um uh w w w was found <clears throat> that had been forced displacement with practice of violence uh coercion and hum humiliation the this fact is aggravated a situation a situation of displacement um endures disrespected free prior and informed consent Uh, I think. Posso. Posso continuar? Uh, eu vou só falar um pouco sobre uh, esse processo de compensação. Tá, termina, tenta fazer um pouco mais rápido para. Yeah. And uh, before the the construction of the hydroelectric, the the company responsible uh, is just the families. And uh, whose the the houses would be affected by the the construction, and during this this phase of registration, a series of human rights violations were reported, uh, which included uh, the failure to register some families and situations considered arbitrary and extremely violent. Such as setting fire to houses with the, the residents' belongings inside, uh, furniture, um, appliances to personal items, documents, photographies. So the, this is happened here uh, in this phase of the registration. And most of families uh, were not considered the were not offered uh, a satisfactory uh, compensation in, in many 
in many cases the the compensation did not make it uh, didn't make it possible to rebuild what had been lost. Uh, é isso, Sátia. Tinha muito thank mais coisas, so mas é porque eu realmente uh, não... Não, não dá, não dá. Ok, thank you so much, Letícia. Moving on. Um, so, uh, so, the methodology that we chose for this research <coughs> is ethnographic, um, where we, we get involved with the community and understand deeply um, how their lives, um, their livelihood, how they work, their attachment and connection to the place and, and space. So that's why we chose this type of method. The go along interview uh, was something that I that we thought was very interesting because the the interviewee they they work as a tour guide, um, and they show their own experiences and the interpretation of the place, and and the environment and and their practices. So as you can see on the on both pictures, we we went to. We went in, in in boat rides and and we went inside the their farms to understand um, how they they plant and they live uh, with uh, this environment. Um, this part is uh, Jeziani. Um, Jeziani, could you please um, take over? Okay. Um, over the past seven years, I have observed the consequences of the oh. Belmont then on the lives of the riverine peoples. So uh, in this time, um, I, I will, Dona Joana. Oi. Dona Joana. Oi. Eu, a senhora pode falar um pouquinho sobre a pesca? Sim, posso, sim. So Dona Joana will uh, say a little bit about the, the fishery, the impact of the fishery um, after the dam. É porque aqui nós, do lago do Belo Monte, nós estamos sendo muito impactados sobre a pesca, né? Porque nós, pescadores do Rio Xingu aqui, está passando muito sacrifício por causa que não existe peixe mais. Porque uma hora está seco, outra hora está cheio. No tempo da desova do peixe, está seco. Quando enche, os peixes já desovou. Então, os peixes é morrendo, né? morre muito peixe. Os peixes que desovam não, não tiram mais o, os peixinhos, porque a, as ovas ficaram todas no seco. Então, a gente coloca, eu sou pescadora, né? Coloco 10 maiadeiras aqui, atravessa quase o rio todo. Às vezes nós tira um peixe. Quando tira um, quando, tem vezes que a gente coloca não tira nenhum. Então, a nós estamos passando uma situação muito complicada aqui sobre o peixe. Todos os pescadores. So, translating what Dona Joana said, she said that um, the cycle of the water has changed, which affects the, the, the cycle of the fish. When they they lay the, the eggs, um, they do that when it's, it's um, flooded, when there's enough water. But because, of, because the dam opens to create, to, to generate electricity, it dries. So there's no, there's no, um, um, how, do you, how do you say it? I'm sorry. Um, I don't know, but, um, so, sorry? Plenty room for no, I, for producing. Yeah, so so the so when it when it dries, the eggs they die. They die because of 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 the lack of water. So when when she goes out to fish, she puts nets um, throughout the the river. And before they used to catch a lot of fish. Now she said she's catching one or two each time. Um, Jason. Okay, okay, thank you, Satya. Uh, so the hydropower then changed the natural course of the river and the ecosystem. So, okay, pode passar. The, the regions are fall and flora are affected by the flooding of the large 
areas and uh, the destruction of the natural habitats. So these caused loss of the biodiversity and populations of fish and these these are loss of biodiversity for it's very important for Iberian peoples. Okay. So before then, the then, our Iberian people living on the river banks with access of a wide variety of fish. So after, after of the then, or after the then, uh, these not uh, in this early, uh, the riverian people living in the city uh, will assess the, the fish, uh, important source of income and food for people. Next. Okay, okay next. <laughs> so the forest are very important for people in our region. Uh, this is a note, note, a Brazilian note. In our, our stone in forest, but, but uh, the consequence of the then caused the loss of the biodiversity. Oi, Dona John. Oi. Oh, can I can okay, I add something? No, why did? Can I add Dona something? Eu estou falando Dona Joana sobre a importância da floresta para os ribeirinhos. Estou uh -huh. entendendo daqui. Ok, ok, thank you. Next, Sacha. Just, just let me, uh, just let me add something here. It's just um, for people to understand. When the reservoir was created, when the flooded, the permanent flooded was created, a lot of vegetation died, and and the Brazilian nut was one of them. So, so in the river banks, um, they were lost. So they are inside the forest now. So you have to to uh, travel a little bit more to um, be able to get these um, these these. Uh, nuts. Sometimes you cannot find them in the area, and sometimes you can find them very far away. Né, né Geise? Tô certa? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank She's you. the specialist, so I need to um, make sure I'm not saying anything incorrect. Okay, so the creation of the Riverine Council was something very unique in the in Brazil. Um, they were they were created to be recognized and represent the riverine families that were affected by the construction of the dam so they could be heard as you as you heard Leticia's uh uh part of the presentation they were um they were invisible uh throughout the process um the the riverine council enabled them to to earn their rights and return to the banks the return to the banks um, was the creation of the riverine territory. That was one of the the, the things that they fought, they fought for, right, Giziani? Okay, uh, in the in their new places, the riverine people are planting forest for food for econ, and uh, they. Uh, they contribute to biodiversity in this ecosystem, local in ecosystem. So this happened in these new places after the then. And Dona Joana, for example, uh, plant in a backyard in your house and for food, for uh for ecom and so that is plenty forest in this ecosystem local ecosystem this is very important for biodiversity and the region to 
so this so the the riverine territory is quite interesting because it's one of its kind um they were able to earn this uh this new territory to return to the banks that's something that they wanted to because they had to they were displaced from the banks and they fought to to return for, for uh to it um And what Jayziani is saying, they have a new project where they are trying to uh, to regenerate this area, so this area can produce again. And Dona Joana, she she thinks it's not only her, but many riverine families are planting um, trees that also attracts uh, fish because of their importance to their. Um, their uh, food security, because food insecurity has become a very, very strong uh, point in their uh, lives. Um, we are sorry for taking so long for this presentation, but we are reaching um, the end. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit of the, the trip to EDD. The trip to EDD, we would like to explain the importance of this trip. So as you can see in this map, on the top right, the city of Altamira, and on the on the left, a little bit uh, lower, there is the Hezex Itiri, where, where is a is a protected area, um, which is called Itiri uh, 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 River. Um, this th the importance of this project is because we wanted to. Um, focus on the component of River Cities Network, which is the BIOS. Um, and something that we noticed um, during our research was that the, the riverine people from Altamira, many of them came from this region, not only EDD, but there's there are other rivers around it, uh, um, Frizio um, and, and other one. Um, but we focus on this one because um, Dona Joana's mother, um, she she was a really great storyteller and one of the oldest women, um, riverine women in the area still alive. So when we um, we got the the financial support for this project, the day that we we received it, she unfortunately passed away. But that didn't change our plans because we thought it would be important to go there and still talk to the oldest women, um, the oldest riverine women in the in that area. Also, because Dona Joana is from that area, and she, she and and she joined the 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 this exp this this um this field work, um, of course, because she's a member. Um, And she was able to open a lot of doors and and sh and explain to us many things that were uh, very important for us to understand the context of the area, the the history, and the and the environment, just the environment. Um, so that's why we went to the the EDD River. Unfortunately, Leticia is not in the picture because she wasn't uh, in the team um, during that period. Um, she came into the team afterwards. But as you can see, this is the team that went to the EDD River. Uh, we uh, interviewed the oldest uh, women that are still living in the area. We could see how they they how their livelihood and their connection to the river. We could see the importance and how that is changed in the in the Shingu uh, River. So we wanted to understand how it how it, it it should be before because we don't know how it was before the dam and how it is now to be able to think of the future i think uh Jayziani will be able to say a little bit more of her perspective as a biologist um um uh, with this uh what she felt of the impact of the dam um so yeah so maybe jayzy if you would you like to Say something now. Jayzy. <clears throat> Oi. Oi. Ah, posso falar em português e você traduz essa parte? Tá, vai devagar, vai devagar. 
Bom, o, o Ibiri mantém uma biodiversidade é, mais conservada é, do que na região mais afetada por Belo Monte. So Iriri River still has uh, obtains still has the 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 biodiversity a little bit more um, conserved than the the Xingu River that has been affected by uh, the construction of the dam. Então as comunidades ribeirinhas que vivem lá têm mais acesso à floresta e a aos peixes que são importantes para a alimentação. So the riverine communities that are still living in the Iriri River, um, they, they have access to all these goods that um, the forest offers, which are the, the farming and the, the, the trees, the plants, the vegetation and the, and the fish, which is very important for them. Então, o Iriri retrata uma história importante para os ribeirinhos de toda a região incluindo aqueles que estão afetados por Belo Monte. Desculpa, repete, já, repete. Que o, o Iriri, ele traz uma história importante para as famílias ribeirinhas por manter a, o ecossistema mais próximo ao que era antes de Belo Monte. Yes. So Iriri still holds a very important um, history to this, uh, to the riverine families, because it still maintains this, the same livelihood as before Belamont. Okay. So the outcome of this, uh, this research is, um, the outcome is, is this finding where we could see how they lived uh, before and how they're living now. And we are still trying to understand how we're gonna work with this, uh, but the, there is a, a, it's quite important to understand how they used to live before um, and how they used to, to, their livelihood, traditional livelihood um, has changed in the environment. And another outcome is the booklet um, that uh, came out of this uh, research. Um, the research was done last year and this booklet um, is is a collective Palabra of, de the the this this booklet is a collective of words from the riverine women uh the words uh reflect the context is not the definition so that's 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 how you can be introduced to their life um, every day um I think it would be, if we have time, Paul, um, I think it would be quite in interesting to hear Dona Joana and, and her experience with this, uh, with this uh, uh, research, uh, field research last year. Do you think we still have time? Sure, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Dona Joana, é, a senhora poderia falar um pouquinho sobre a sua experiência no IDRI, a importância do, do que você achou? Sim, posso. É, é, essa viagem que a gente fez foi muito, bom, foi muito importante para mim, assim, né? De me chegar lá e ver as coisas, né? E como mudou. Eu achei que teve uma grande mudança, né? Por causa que aqueles ribeirinhos lá, eles não estão passando tão bem por uma situação boa, né? Porque a embarcação de antigamente que comprava os produtos deles, né? O trabalho que a gente do meu tempo, né? Eu acho assim que o trabalho que a gente tinha antigamente, nós tirávamos nossa castanha, nós tirava nossa, fazia nossa borracha, tinha um regatão que comprava, né? Então hoje em dia eles não têm mais isso, acabou, né? Eles estão lá com a floresta ainda quase inteira, mas não tem como vender os produtos deles, né? E só Posso falar? Assim. Posso falar rapidinho? Só um minutinho. So, Dona Joana, the, the, uh, Dona Joana, she was born in the Iriri uh, region, and she left the Iriri region when she was 15, um, and then returned last year for the first time in... Quantos anos, Dona Joana? Foi 43 anos que a senhora não tinha voltado para o Iriri? Ah, Quantos? 40. 40. 40 years. 
40 years that she hadn't returned to ADD. So she saw a lot of differences. She said that the the forest is still there. You can see the resources that people are still living their livelihood. However, it's very disconnected to the to the city. So Altamira is quite is disconnected because of of navigation and the 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 lack of navigation. Um. Yeah, I think that I think that was it. Let let me ask her. But pode continuar, Dona Joana. Acho que lá eles são uma pessoa muito precária, né? Sobre saúde, educação, né? Que eles não têm boa qualidade, né? Saúde, principalmente, não tem de qualidade nenhuma, né? Então, eles vivem lá uma vida assim, é, sem ter um recurso de, de saúde, de, 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 de educação, né? Eles estão lá no meio daquela floresta lá, tem muitas coisas, mas não tem isso, né? Então, é uma vida meio complicada deles lá também. Passam por situação que a vez tem o sal, mas não tem a farinha, porque não pode fazer roça, né? Também. A vez tem o peixe para comer, mas não tem o óleo, essas coisas assim, né? Porque é muito difícil a situação para chegar as coisas lá na no, aonde eles estão. So things are are so the, the the products are very hard to reach that area because of this disconnection. Um, they do have a lot of uh, problems with education, so the school system is quite poor there. Um, also, the health system is quite poor there. They do have a few clinics but they are very um, basic if you need some more treatment you have to go to the city so there is this uh, problem with the distance um, just for you guys to have an idea uh, for us to reach um, that the, her community which is the last community in the in the Iriri region we took an entire day so it was six hours um by car and then the rest by boat uh, up up the river. So th th these are the 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 problems that they face in the Iriri uh, region. Dona Joana, a senhora quer fechar uh, a, a, a sua fala? Sim, pode ser. Ah, sim, né? Sobre a lá, porque lá ainda tem muita floresta, né? <coughs> e aí estão chegando para perto, é onça, é todo tipo de bicho, né? Porque as florestas daqui da, do, estão se acabando daqui da nossa região, né? Porque teve muito fazendeiro, né? E com a barra chegada da barragem foi des, desmatada muito, né? Então, os bichos estão chegando para encostar das casas lá, os pessoal lá, os filhos lá não podem mais nem estar tá saindo do terreno com medo de onça, né? Então, é uma vida deles lá tão meia complicada por causa dessa situação, né? Porque lá para trás tem muitas fazendas, aí a mata ficou mais para beira do rio, lá onde na beira do rio Iriri, aí a, os mais estão chegando para perto, né? Então é, é ruim. E outra a coisa senhora... assim. A senhora quer dizer que que o Belo Monte afetou o Iriri dessa forma, que que como eles não estão mais naquela região do Belo Monte, eles estão indo para o Iriri? Sim, então, ah, sim, tá bom, com certeza. Tá bom. Uhum. Okay, posso falar isso? Pode. Okay, so so she's saying that she saw that there was an uh, impact from the Shingle River, that the the deforestation that's occurring there has uh, has reflected in the Irid uh, River because the animals are are more present in the EDD because the, their space is is smaller so they are navigating they are they're going to this to that area um there are a lot of uh, agricultural uh, land around it which is also um uh, reducing the animals uh, area dona joana a gente vamos vamos terminar agora para para conseguir conversar com o pessoal sim tá bom Okay, so um, I think we should uh, finish now. This is this is the end of uh, the presentation. Thank you so much for your your kind attention. I know it took a long time, um, but uh, this translation and and everything uh, it just takes a while. Um, yeah, uh, Paul. <laughs>